This place is like a serial killer's house. Or like many different possibilities for a serial killer's house. What do you mean? The prices here are all so reasonable and there's so much of it. We'll be able to find anything here. Right? It's what we'll be able to find us that worries me. So you're really suggesting we bring this giant sheet of glass into the middle of our living room and suspend it there at like knee height where people are more than likely to just... I don't know, it's in budget and it would look grown up. But we're not grown ups. I know, that's why we have to pretend to be. Look, if you really want to incorporate glass into our over, come look at these. I mean, I told you, I don't care. I'm just making suggestions because you care for some reason. Look, it's a coffee table centerpiece. You take one of these glass jars, and then choose a box of things to put in it. A box of things? Yes, things! Little color paper balls, stones, sticks. What's that? I don't know, it just looks like a pipe cleaner twisted into a Let's see. Look, do you want to pick out a box of things that you feel will express the unique spirit of the home we're trying to create? Well, none of them will express it because all of them have been mass produced in Swedish sweatshops. So, I mean, everything we're going to buy is like that. So it will be perfect if you think about it. But these pipe cleaners cannot express our own unique ethos of existence. I'm sorry, do we have a unique ethos of existence? Look, we should. We need to find a new mode of expression. Well, how about this? How about you go down to the cafeteria and think out our unique ethos of existence while I do this? No! <laughs> if we buy these pipe cleaners and arrange them in a bowl on our coffee table, we will be unthinkingly subscribing to someone else's aesthetic. We need to find our own new mode of expression. Well, how about this? How about we just use a coffee table as a couch and put our mugs on lamps? No one wants to come over and a house won't work, but everyone will know that we're living in a way that is distinctly our own. And for our wardrobe, let's just put our clothes in the refrigerator and show up to work with icicles hanging up our head. And we'll just explain to everyone that we're pushing the limits of what it means to be a wardrobe. You see what we just did there? Yeah, that would be dumb. I know it would be dumb. You see, your problem here is that new modes of expression need new content to express. Otherwise, you're just Andy Warhol jacking off into Campbell's soup can because he's a white boy and doesn't have anything else to do. We're gonna get this coffee table, and that's that. Let's go find some kitchen stuff. So, what I'm saying is, if we buy that coffee table, we'll be saying it's ours. But a hundred, perhaps a thousand other people have coffee tables just like it in their apartments, too. Is living your life just like scrolling through Tumblr now? Where we repost a bunch of other people's stuff and call it our own blog? I mean, do you want to build your own furniture for our entire apartment? That's not what I'm saying. And what kind of furniture would you build for our apartment? And how would it be significantly different from anything in here? And what would it even mean that it was different? You see, your problem here is that if you're trying to be different for the sake of being different, you just end up like the sea punks and the health gods of the world. Pure aesthetic, no point. Why would you want that? Untrue. You don't need meaning to have an aesthetic. Late capitalism has provided us with plenty of enjoyable aesthetics which are totally devoid of content. Now that we have SoundCloud and Netflix to distribute things, we go through movements like fad diets, dubstep, sea pump, vaporwave, all within the span of a few years. And what did any of them mean? Compare that to bebop, which lasted a decade, and classical music, which lasted like 200 years. You do realize that there are many distinct movements within classical music. It wasn't just three centuries of the same song. To get my point. 
With the acceleration of cultural change brought about by the digital age, changes become meaningless. When it happens, it's just happening to keep people entertained and consuming constantly. But what actual new things are being said? It's like the Rococo period before the French Revolution, showing off technical mastery, but then really just painting rich people having fun with their money, rather than critiquing society as some would say that art is supposed to do. So what if I want to live differently just so that I can feel independent? It has no more or less meaning than anything else, ever. And that's your aesthetic? Choosing ways to be different at random? How is blind nonconformism different from blind conformism? Personal fulfillment and positive intent. Rather than choosing the default option, being a basic bitch, if you will. I should also mention that an aesthetic that one person subscribes to is as useful as a language that one person speaks. Despite lack of meaning, the reason these movements rise and fall isn't people's desire to be unique, it's their desire to come together. That's why they call them subcultures. And you can't have a culture with just one person in it. Okay, well then I would want to create the subculture. But subcultures aren't created by people. They're created by other subcultures. Like how rock comes from jazz and the romantics were reacting to the enlightenment. All a subculture is is creating a new combination of the same building blocks that have always been around. Creating an aesthetic is just choosing which blocks to use, like reblogging posts on Tumblr and that. Is your Tumblr yours? Did you create it? No. But one could say that it is an expression of you because it shows what cultural detritus you've chosen to line your nest with. That's all people are, pieces of other people. So there is choice. And for me, choice is what matters. But that's still an illusion and doesn't disprove determinism. Okay, yes, people have always struggled with the same questions, but why must you be so fatalistic? Can't you conceive that there might be answers and new things to say? What I'm trying to tell you is, is that there's never been anything new to say. It doesn't ultimately matter what's being constructed or reacted to. It's all the same. People everywhere all trying to be different and new. And we get louder and bigger and fancier, but it's all the same human condition. Eat, fuck, sleep, life, birth, death. No art, no work of art or philosophy can ever change the ultimate futility of human endeavor. Progress is a myth and so is individualism. Now do you see? The words may be everyone's, but my voice is mine. Alright, what you're saying might be true, but we still remember Warhol, Picasso, Dali, the gods of the Western canon. Are you really telling me that there is nothing that distinguishes them from each other? What I'm trying to tell you is that art isn't about what makes you different. It's about what makes you just like everyone else. If anything you do becomes immortal, it will be because it already resonates with how people are already feeling. You keep constructing the artist as a god. All you need to make good art is to be nothing more or less than human. Sad, pathetic, loud, self-defeating, over, exuberant. <laughs> Okay, I get your point. But, like, anyone can say that they're sad and they're going to die. It's, it's the way that you say it, the way that you express the themes that you're dealing with. That's what makes people respond to what you have to say. That's what makes you memorable. Where's the cart? I don't know, we must have lost it somewhere. Let's go chase our steps.